steps to mastering self-discipline. Anyone can master self-discipline if they really want to do it. Even the process of trying to develop more self-discipline will make a huge difference in your life. You learn to control your impulses, desires, and wants so that you can stay focused on achieving your long-term goals. Let's check out 8 steps to mastering self-discipline that you can start using today. 1. Know what self-discipline is. Sometimes it's hard to become self-disciplined for people because they don't know what it means. They think ITLM will take away all the fun from their life. On the contrary, all being self-disciplined means is that you don't allow distractions or short-term temptations or desires to get in the way of reaching your long-term goals. 2. Set clear goals. To be successful in anything in life, you must have a reason for doing it. Your reasons, in this case, are your goals. Perhaps you want to start exercising every day. Maybe you need a process to finish a work project. Whatever it is, create the goal using very specific language. Read all about SMART goals so that you set goals the best way. Your goals, the results you are looking for, will be your why and your motivation going forward. 3. Know how to achieve your goals. Once you set a goal, write down exactly how you are going to achieve it. Write down every single step it will take for each goal that you've set, then put it in your calendar. Schedule it as if you're going to do it and schedule it realistically. Keep in mind how long things really take and give yourself enough time, as well as a cushion. 4. Know your weaknesses. If there is something that will distract you, now is the time to admit it. For example, if you want to get up an hour earlier each morning so that you can go to the gym before work, but you never can fall asleep before midnight, why not choose to exercise at a different time so that your goal is achievable and works around your weakness? 5. Learn how to prioritize. The other thing you really need to practice and learn to be good at when mastering self-discipline is how to put things in the right order so that there are no bottlenecks. It's sort of like realizing that your toothbrush should be in your bathroom so that you don't forget to brush your teeth. Things should fit together simply. This takes practice, as well as trial and error. 6. Track everything. To get better at self-discipline you'll need to track everything. That's the only way you know if you're doing better or not. Get a journal of some kind the kind you'll use is the best kind, and write it in each day to record your progress and feelings about various situations. 7. Get accountability. One thing about self-discipline is that eventually, you need to be able to provide accountability to yourself. For now, you might want to find a support group or a friend to talk to about your self-improvement goals so that you can work together. 8. Improve. As you track and measure your progress and are accountable for your promises to yourself and others, you can find areas where you can make improvements. Self-discipline is something you get better at with practice. Truly mastering self-discipline is mostly about understanding what it is, what it means, and the benefits of doing it, and then practicing it every day. You may not be perfect, but the more you succeed, the stronger you will become and the better you'll be at being self-disciplined in the healthiest way. Is self-discipline always a good thing? It doesn't really matter what you're talking about, there is always a way to have too much of something. That includes having too much self-discipline. There is a time when that control is not even self-discipline anymore, but has become self-abuse. If you've gone too far, you may end up having some characteristics about your personality that aren't beneficial. Let's look closer into some signs that things may have gone too far. You can't make decisions. You're overly cautious when you try to make choices. You can't choose what to eat for dinner. You can't pick which movie to go to, 
and you can't figure out what to do with your life. You're scared of making the wrong decision, so you tend not to make any. Thus, you make no progress in life. You have become a perfectionist. Some people think the word perfectionist makes them sound smart and important. However, the truth is a person who has become a perfectionist is usually not full of self-confidence. Their perfectionism is really an excuse never to do anything or finish anything due to fear of success or failure. You are too focused on rules and regulations. Following the law is good and it's great to care about rules and regulations. However, you can take this too far if you cannot play a game or do anything without pointing out the rules everyone else is breaking before you can have any fun. Plus, if you nitpick every little thing, you will never get anything done. You can't take breaks. While sticking to a schedule is a good thing, especially if you are a manager, a business owner, or a parent, you can take that too far. It's imperative to set up your day so that you have time for breaks and set up your schedule and task list with breaks in mind. A person who is all work and no play will not end up being successful long term without burning out. You feel lonely. If you're not taking breaks and you cannot make decisions, you may start to feel lonely and out of touch with others, even if they're there with you. You feel detached from others because you must be regimented in everything you do. Has your quest to have more self-discipline crossed over to become a serious problem of being too controlled to the point that you cannot be yourself, feel stressed out all the time, and cannot make decisions due to being so risk-averse? If this happens, it's time to get back to normal self-discipline. The point is to learn to retrain yourself now so that you can meet long-term goals in work and in life, not to end up miserable. I know, I know, I know that you like it like that. I wait designer, check the name on the tag. White fox fur on my jacket. Excuse me, that's a